Hey, welcome back. This is motion graph video number two. The first one was an animation I made with cars traveling from bird's eye view um, in the up or down directions along a page, and we could see exactly how those dots or position dots get transferred over onto a position versus time graph. Now we're going to take it to the next level. We're going to start looking at the next type of graph, the velocity versus time graph, and connect it back to the position versus time graph. A couple important things. Let's say right off the bat, there are three types of motion graphs you want to be aware, aware of. Three types of motion graphs. Three types of motion graphs. The first one is the position versus time. Position versus time. That's also read as position on the y-axis as a function of time on the x-axis. So sometimes we abbreviate that. I'll abbreviate it as p lowercase v uh, t. pvt. It's shorthand. The other type is the velocity versus time graph also read as velocity as a function of time, so velocity on the y-axis and time on the x, or VVT for short, and then acceleration versus time. There's also a video on the um, kinematic variables like position, velocity, and acceleration. Make sure you have those uh, key terms down. All right, so these are the three types of motion graphs that we deal with. I could pick a very particular situation, like a car moving at a constant speed in one direction. And for that very particular scenario, I could have a position versus time graph, a velocity versus time graph, and an acceleration versus time graph. They'll all show me a slightly different thing, but they're all three the same um, they're talking about the same scenario, just a car moving in a straight line at a constant speed, and I could have these three different perspectives, position, velocity, and acceleration. They all give me equal glimpses of the truth of that scenario. So we like to represent one particular motion um, with a position versus time and a velocity versus time and an acceleration versus time. We want to put all those pieces together, and so those three different types of graphs that we can make should agree with each other. So um, let's just start off with a position versus time graph for that very scenario, a car moving in one direction at um, a constant speed. So this is going to be a position versus time graph. I label it at the top as PVT, or you can label it as writing out position versus time. Just write PVT. Um, if it's moving in the horizontal direction, in the x direction, then on my y-axis, I'm going to call that x. I know, I'm putting an x on the y-axis. But remember, the x and y axes, that x and y, those are just placeholders for actual variables that mean something. Generic x and y don't mean anything. This is a position versus time graph, and I'm going to talk about a car moving in the horizontal direction, or along the horizontal dimension, which is going to be the x dimension. So position goes on the y-axis, therefore I'm putting an x to represent horizontal position on the y-axis. On the x-axis I have t. If this were an object, like I throw a ball up into the air, then if I do a position versus time graph, I'm going to call the y-axis y, because y is the vertical dimension or vertical direction. All right. If you've seen the uh, previous video with the animations, then you know that if we have an object moving at a constant speed in one direction, then the position versus time graph is going to be linear, and I'm going to go ahead and assume that the car started at the origin or where the x position equals zero. If it started somewhere else, then I would need to translate my blue function up, because if it started at the, let's say, x equals two position up there, then and then traveled forward at a constant speed, I would have to have that function like that. But I'm just going to assume we're starting from the zero line. No reason not to. Okay, so right here we have just a basic sketch. This is the type of motion graph you're producing for the visual component on your assessment questions. We don't need all these numbers in there. We're just trying to get the basic shape right so we understand this is an object, in this case a car, moving horizontally at a constant speed. So here's constant speed constant speed in the positive direction. Right, that's all that's going on there. It's a really thick ink. Okay. Now let's think, what would the velocity versus time graph look like? What would the velocity versus time graph look like? I'm going to put it right next door, to the right now. Remember, our velocity is representing how quickly our position is changing and in what direction. I'm going to label this as a V, VT graph, velocity versus time. Uh, my velocity is going to be symbolized by what? Lowercase v, and that's going on the y-axis. 
time is lowercase t, it's always going on the x-axis. All right, so I can look and think about and imagine in my mind, like a movie of a car moving at a constant speed in one direction, is its velocity changing? Velocity is how fast and in what direction. It's not changing speed. It's going at a constant speed. So its velocity is going to be constant. It's going to be the same value. That's what's represented on the y-axis right here, is the value of your velocity. Is it 10 meters per second, 20 meters per second, whatever it is. That's what's represented on the y-axis. So if that value is constant, not changing, then I should just have a nice horizontal line. Doot, 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 doot. And the value that is indicated right here, there's going to be a number, right, right there. That would be the speed of our car. And because our velocity is in the first quadrant, remember, first quadrant of our graph, first quadrant in our graph, the y-axis is positive. Y-axis is positive. So this velocity versus time graph tells us two things. It tells us the number, the magnitude, the speed of our object. Really, it's not the speed, but it is the how fast part of velocity. Um, it tells us that on the y-axis with a number and a unit. And because this is in the first quadrant, the y value, the velocity, is going to be positive. So that tells us we're traveling in the positive direction. The relationship here that's really important to note is going to be this. If I look back at my position versus time graph, I pick any two points here. I could pick any, any points on this line. It's linear, right? And I figure out the slope. The slope on a position versus time graph is the velocity. The slope on a position time graph is the velocity. Okay, so whatever value, whatever number I get for the slope over here in this position time graph, that's going to be this number on the y-axis for the velocity. And if you're if you're you know getting a little ahead and ambitious there, uh, another thing you could say is the uh, derivative on the position versus time graph is the velocity, because the velocity versus time graph is the derivative of position versus time. It tells you about rates of change. That's it. Let's take another example. Um, let me make another x, y thingy. Do and then let's copy it and make another one. This one, let's do one where the uh, paste. Uh, let's do one where the car is speeding up. Um, car speeding up in one direction. Car speeding up in um, positive direction. And it'll start at the same position at x equals zero, which is going to be way down here at the origin on our first position versus time graph. And it's going to be speeding up. So if you saw the last video, you know exactly what that's going to look like. It's not going to be linear. It's going to be a curvy. Yeah, not bad, right? So if we're speeding up at a constant rate, that's going to be a quadratic or squared function. So this is, you could say this is quadratic or a squared function. One of the five important types of graphs I said we need to know. So here's position versus time for a car speeding up in the positive direction. Boom, it's curvy, okay? Velocity versus time. What's going on there? Um, so let's say this car is starting at, with a speed of zero, a velocity of zero. It's not moving, and then you start going. And speed up the whole time at a constant rate. If we start from rest, then the velocity at the very beginning is going to be zero. So there's zero on the velocity versus time graph, right? Right down there. That's The y-axis is the velocity, so we're starting at zero. If we're speeding up at a constant rate, then I'm not going to have a curvy velocity time graph. It's just going to be linear. I'm speeding up at a constant rate. That's kind of similar to changing position at a constant rate, except we're not talking about position anymore. We're talking about the velocity increasing at a constant rate. So now this becomes linear. There's my velocity versus time graph. As I mentioned before, just previously, the slope on the position versus time is going to be the velocity. So the slope is changing, right? The slope starts out at zero right down here at the beginning. So here's my slope in yellow. My slope starts out at zero, so our velocity at the very beginning is zero. Then what happens? The slope gets steeper. So here we're drawing the slope at a point. We're drawing the slope at a point tangent to this curve. This is where the calculus gets really helpful. But we don't need to do that. We're just thinking about it conceptually. 
look what happens to my yellow slopes at particular points on my position versus time graph. They're getting steeper and steeper as time goes on. And if the slope on the position time is getting steeper, you can think the absolute value of the slope is getting bigger. So it's getting steeper, it's getting away from zero. Here's zero slope, it's getting either like this or going like that. If the steepness of the slope is increasing on the position versus time graph, then we're speeding up. So this tells us that we're speeding up. That makes sense, that matches up with what we got over here. The slope on our position time graph is still our velocity but our velocity is changing with time because we're speeding up. So this slope here at the very beginning is zero at the very beginning. And so that corresponds with our velocity value being zero right there at the origin. Our slope for this guy, that slope for our very first point that I drew is gonna correspond with the value of the velocity right there. So if the position versus time is curvy, it's going to be quadratic, or a squared graph. If it's curvy like that, or like this, then you're going to have a linear velocity versus time graph. All of these slopes will correspond, giving you a value for the velocity each of those respective times. Okay, so there's how we can look at the position for the time versus time for a car speeding up in the positive direction, and how that corresponds with a velocity versus time graph. We're going to do another example because we need to look at something we can see on the velocity versus time graph that will take us back to position. So let's use that same example, car speeding up in the positive direction. Okay, so I have the same scenario represented again, same position versus time on the left, velocity versus time on the right, we got a car speeding up in the positive direction. We just talked about how the slope on the position versus time translates over to the velocity versus time graph. Now we're actually going to look at the velocity versus time graph. I'm going to pick a couple points here. Because instead of looking at slope, we can also look at something else called the area under the curve. So I'm going to pick two points on the x-axis on the velocity versus time graph to show you where they correspond to the func where the you know where it is on the function right there, right there. And these are on the x-axis two different points in time. So I'm going to call it time initial and time final. Okay, one's earlier in time, one's later. You can always look at the slope on these functions for all the graph we'll, we'll eventually look at. So we said the slope on the position versus time tells you the velocity at any point in time. Here the slope is changing on the position versus time graph, therefore the velocity is changing. We said how is the slope changing? It's getting steeper and steeper. The absolute magnitude of the slope is increasing. It's getting either more steep like this, like this, or it's getting more steep like this. And so that slope tells you the velocity. Over here on the velocity time graph, we're now going to look at something that's not the slope, but something we call area under the curve. Area under the curve. Area under the curve is the same thing as looking at the area between the function and the x-axis. So the function is our blue line, and the x-axis is the x-axis, which is actually the time axis. Okay, so where is that area under the curve right now? It's going to be this area that I've bound between initial time and final time. It can be any area under the curve, you just you pick which times you're talking about depending on what, what you care about. It might be the entire area under the entire function, or between the entire function and the x-axis, or between two specific points in time. you got to decide based on the problem you're working. Okay, so what's so important about this area under the curve, Stacy? If you find the area under the curve here, which is, I mean, this is technically a trapezoid in there, but you could break it up into like a triangle, you know, like that. You could find the area of that triangle, and then you could find the area of this square down here. Whatever, you could also use a trapezoid formula for the area. When you find the area under the curve on a velocity versus time graph, you have discovered the change in position of that object. Change in position, which is going to be the same as delta x in this case, because we're traveling horizontally in the x dimension. So, think about that. If we have a certain area under the curve we care about, which is between this time and this time, and between this initial velocity and this final velocity, and we say, I wonder how much the car changed position between time initial and time final 
you just need to find the area under the curve, which means the area between the function and the x-axis. That takes you back to the left to information about the position. So let's say that one more time, everything. The slope right here on a position versus time graph tells me the velocity of that object at some point in time. In this case, our slope is changing. So if I find the slope here, that's going to tell me the velocity that lines up over here on my velocity time graph. If I find the slope here, that's going to correspond with the velocity over here on my velocity time graph. It's going to be a particular amount. It's going to be a particular number represented on the y-axis. Slope on position time tells me the velocity on the velocity time graph. If I go to the velocity time graph and I find the area under the curve, that takes me back to position information and it tells me the change in position. So we can say slope, let's, let's make it concise and pull it all together. Slope on PVT tells me velocity. If it's a constant slope on a position versus time graph, then that means we're traveling at a constant velocity. If I find area under the curve on a velocity time graph, area under curve on VVT, area under the curve on a velocity versus time graph, that tells me delta x, or change in position. So the change in position between initial and final time was going to be indicated, here's x initial, it will be indicated on the y-axis of my position versus time graph, x final. So it would actually be this distance measured here on the y-axis, that's going to be delta x that corresponds, it's going to be equivalent to the number, which is the area bound between initial and final time on our velocity versus time graph. Okay, there we go. There's some stuff about position uh, versus time and the velocity versus time uh, motion graphs. Go look at some interactives, um, see if you can do some of those ma graph matching and interpreting position, velocity, time graph.